Hey folks, welcome to our talk about having the performance cake and eat securely too. I'm Sasha, one of the maintainers of Cryo, and I'm also an upstream contributor to Kubernetes, and I have the pleasure to be here today with Peter. Hey everyone, my name is Peter Hunt. I'm also a Cryo maintainer, as well as a contributor to Podman, Kanban, and Kubernetes. I'd like to thank everyone for joining us today. Back to you, Sasha. Thanks, Peter. Let's see about what we are talking today. So first of all, we will speak about how SA Linux works together with Kubernetes and Cryo. We will discuss the C-Linux options field in the security context. We will also speak about available C-Linux options at all and how labeling affects the container in production. After that, we will speak about a problem declaration. So we will see what are the timeouts for recourse of relabeling, for example, and what are the performance impacts of something like this. After that, we will speak about possible solutions of the problem. So for example, we will discuss if we can skipping the relabel uh, if the container is super privileged, for example. And then we will discuss future work. So everything which comes into our mind and we will probably add later on for optimization. So how does SA Linux work in Kubernetes? Assigning SA Linux labels to whole pods or single containers can be done by using the SA Linux options field of the security context. Processes as well as files are labeled then with an SA Linux context that contains additional information. So for example, the SA Linux user, its role, its type, and optionally a level. Um, those are reflected in the SA Linux type options field. So we have a user, which is an identity that is authorized to specify a set of roles. And we have roles, and those roles work in the same way as the Kubernetes RBAC system works. So they control basically which objects can be accessed. And we also have types. And the types are used for type enforcement. So they define a domain of processes um, and a type of files. The level is used for multi-layer or in category security. So it's written as sensitivity colon category set. So for example, it can be S0, uh, C1, 2, 3, and it can also specify, can also be specified by using ranges. The file uh, etc linux targeted ztrans.conf maps those levels to human readable form. So for example, S0, C0 can be company confidential and S0, C3 can be top secret. One requirement to the Kubernetes distribution is that the underlying operating system has to support SE Linux for sure, and also have to come with some predefined policies. So for example, the Red Hat containerized operating system used by OpenShift specify, already specifies those set of rules that we can use ls minus set to find the say, Linux context of the file. In our case, the user is called systemu for etc OS release. The role is object R and the type is etcT. And we have the level S0 for this file. To find out more about the Linux users available on the local machine, you can use se manage user minus L. And this prints an overview about the predefined users, their roles assigned, and available levels. If we now specify SE Linux options in the Kubernetes pod manifest, how do they get translated to the underlying container runtime? So first of all, the provided SE Linux label will be passed one-to-one -to, -one to the kubelet and to the underlying container runtime, which is Cryo in our case, if we use OpenShift. And Cryo will then use this data on the pod sandbox and container creation process to pass it down to the underlying container storage library. And container storage will generate a new process and file, uh, aka mount label, which will be then used by the sandbox. So the file label is used by the root file system of the sandbox, and the process label is used by the processes within the sandbox and the containers. The mount label will be also used for the volume mounts if they support, say, Linux relabeling. But in most cases, the volume driver will support that. For example, if we now run a container with the security context and just change the Linux level to S0C3, top secret in our case, then we can run a test pod with that C Linux options and see that every file, which is part of the root file system inside of this container now runs as S0C3. And there are some corner cases. For example, 
if we share the host pit and the IPC namespace with the pod, then we will not apply any C Linux label at all. Also, privileged containers will not be relabeled as well. And this whole relabeling process will be used by changing the, the secure C Linux context on this, and this can cause performance issues. There's also a special type available for super privileged containers called SPCT. This basically disables C Linux for the container or the whole pod. SPCT is almost similar to the unconfined T type, but it has some differences. So container runtimes are allowed to transition to SPCT and confined processes can communicate with sockets using SPCT. So if you see this type in the wild, then you can be sure that C Linux is mostly disabled for this workload. So in this case, I would like to remind you that please don't run unconfined containers if not absolutely necessary. One more thing to note, if it comes to distributing C Linux policies inside of Kubernetes clusters, then you can choose the security profiles operator to help distributing them across all nodes. It also supports a custom CRD, which makes writing C Linux policies from scratch even easier. And with that, I would like to pass over to Peter. Thanks, Sasha. At this point, the state of Kubernetes and SE Linux may seem great. We have a way for containers to access content they're allowed to, as well as a way of disallowing containers from accessing content they do not own. This prevents the possibility of a container process breaking out of the root from infecting anything on the host it's not allowed to touch. However, there's also a problem. Note how the, before the user or container storage library chose a new level for each pod on startup. As each container gets created, any volumes that it has access to must be relabeled so the container has access to it. Since this label is owned by Cryo, as it sometimes generates it, and is responsible for creating the container's rootFS and mounting the host volumes onto it, Cryo must spend the time each container creation to relabel the volume. The number of files in the volume is not restricted in any way, and thus relabeling can take an arbitrary amount of time. When the kubelet asks Cryo to create a container, it must cap the amount of time Cryo has and cancel the request after that time. Otherwise, the request could have gone into the void and the container creation could never happen. When Cryo can't relabel the volume in time the, and the kubelet times out, it causes the two processes to bicker about it. The kubelet asks Cryo to create the container. Cryo says, I'm working on it and fails. This creates a lot of log churn and scary messages in the Kubernetes event API. We must be able to do better. In other words, we need a solution that satisfies the following conditions. A container must still be able to have a process, a process label that can access the volume, or else what is the point of mounting the volume in the first place? A volume must be labeled so the authorized container can access it, but non-authorized containers cannot. And we want to relabel as few times as possible to ensure the container crea creations and restarts don't time out, if that can be avoided. To satisfy these conditions, we came up with two solutions. The first solution is to conditionally skip the relabel if the top level directory is already correct, assuming the container was specifically allowed to do so. We used Cryo's allowed annotations functionality to ensure an admin wanted this behavior to be enabled on the node and that the pod author actually wanted to opt into it. Some advantages to the solution are the container still gets a label, properly confining it in case it isn't totally trusted. It can still be enabled on per pod granularity, so only containers that need it get this functionality. It is more friendly to restarts than the default behavior. If the container was created once and kept the same label, then it will inherit the work that was previously done to relabel the volume. The same is the case for multiple containers. If multiple containers in a pod access the same volume, only one container incurs the cost of relabeling. The volume can be relabeled ahead of time, so no containers incur the cost of relabeling. However, as with any solution, there are some compromises. The label does have to happen at least once, and if the volume isn't relabeled ahead of time, the first container in the pod is liable to time out. However, subsequent containers or restarts of the same container will succeed. If a file in the volume was relabeled outside of this process, then the container will be denied permission. We don't really expect this to happen 
but we make the feature opt-in to prevent to make it more obvious where to look when a container spuriously gets denied permission to something it previously had access to. Luckily, we came up with an alternative to mitigate these issues. Our second solution is to skip the relabel if the condition container is sufficiently privileged. Remember the special SE Linux type super privileged container? We leverage the fact that the container is essentially unconfined to avoid relabels completely. This solution is faster than the default or the first solution as there is no relabeling ever needed ever. Simpler as it doesn't require configuring cryo or adding any special annotations to the pod and portable. Any volume can be mounted into any privileged pod and never incur the cost of relabeling. However, as is likely obvious, this solution is not very secure. The Cryo team does not typically recommend giving your pod so much privilege unless you absolutely trust it. Otherwise, a container breakout could cause serious issues on the host as that pod can touch is, is allowed is completely unconfined by SE Linux. In other words, the crowd team has present, presented users with three options for their pods, depending how secure and safe they want their pods to be and how, versus how quickly they'd like this relabeling done. The first option, which is the default, is the least performant as it relabels every time, but it is the most secure and reliable as the volume is correctly labeled each time. The second option, conditionally skipping, is more performant as it skips the relabeling sometimes, but it is slightly dangerous to the pod as the contents may change uh, label and the pod will be denied permission. Though it is similarly secure as the first option as both of them have a process label and are confined to only touch the things that they're allowed. The final option, always skipping if privileged, is the most performant because the label never happens. However, such a powerful pod must be trusted. With such a variety of options, you may be asking, what future work could there possibly be? If you did ask yourself that, or are now, I'd like you to imagine a world very similar to the one we have now, but where Cryo doesn't need to relabel at all. In cases where the kubelet knows the label, it can use a mount flag to label the volume when the volume is being mounted. Then it can tell Cryo not to relabel. Thus, the volume gets correctly labeled, and Cryo doesn't need to do it. This means that the time crowd takes to create a container won't be proportional to the size of the volume, and it will reduce the risk of container creations timing out. There is a push to do just this in Kubernetes right now, in Kubernetes Enhanced Proposal 1710. You can check that out for more information. In this future world, we will likely still have the other two cryo workarounds, as they cover cases the kubelet may not be able to, such as when cryo chooses the label after the volume has been created. And with that, I'd like to thank everyone for joining. Here are some resources to learn more about Cryo. And now I'd like to transport from the recorded realm into the live realm for questions.